right. Um, cool. So thank you for the introductions. Um, let me just get a good check. This is all coming in good. Audio, audio is looking good. All right. So we're gonna um, we're gonna get going. Uh, first off, I want to start off with you know asking a question uh, of the audience. It's a little different because you know virtual, but hey. Um, for anyone who's watching, do you all remember this? Um, if you do, please make sure to drink some water. Uh, you probably are a little dehydrated. Um, so I guess I will drink some water as well. But this was Macromedia Flash. Uh, this was probably the coolest thing um, around the time of the early 2000s. Uh, it was an app or program that allows you to build uh, not only um, video games and animation, but interactive websites. Uh, and it had this really cool feature called motion tweens. Motion tweens were essentially a way for you to create motion automatically without you actually having to do too much work. Now, the way it would work is you'd have an object. It would exist in space and you would want to move it to a new space. Well, you would drag out the duration for how long you want that animation to take. You would move it to the new space, select those frames, and then right click and say, create motion tween. And then when you went to go hit play, your item would automatically just move across the screen for you. You didn't have to program the easing. You didn't have to program all the steps in between. Flash was smart enough to know how to do that for you. And you could take it a step further, too. You could even move the element and then change the actual shape if you had set it up appropriately. Flash had this years ago, and it's only just now getting uh, to be to the point where we can recreate these same effects inside of the web. Uh, most of the time in the past, people have tried to use a lot of JavaScript to simulate the same thing, but we're going to look at how we can do this now. Uh, that is probably as close as we're ever going to get to motion tweens uh, in the web. So we're going to talk about view transitions. Um, as I said, my name is Mike Hardington. You can find me basically everywhere online as M. Hardington. So let's dive into this. And we're going to look at this through the lens of an Angular developer. But note that view transitions are a web standard. This is something that will be applicable to every app, uh, whether it's Angular, React, Vue, or no framework at all. So let's start off by defining what view transitions are. Um, it's a technical spec, so there are going to be some technical terms, but we can try to uh, um, normalize that for everybody else. Uh, according to MDM, a view transition API provides a mechanism for easily creating animated transition between different DOM states while also updating the DOM content in a single step. This is a lot of words, a lot of technical jargon. There's MDM web docs that you could go check out. But the simplest way to explain it is by actually seeing it in action. So. Imagine we have this unordered list right here. We have some list items, uh, some text, an icon, and we have four of them. Well, inside of our app, something happened where one of our list items actually needed to be deleted. With view transitions, we can coordinate the removal of that item as well as the animation between where that item was and where the changes in the DOM happen. So for instance, if we remove one of our list items, we would automatically be able to animate the other items up to their new position by just using view transitions uh, inside of our app. It's totally powerful, totally simple to use, but awesome at the same time. And to do this, all we have to do is use this document dot, dot start view transition. It accepts a function as a callback where we can start to do our DOM mutations, but it allows us to wrap all those mutations and safely execute the animation after the contents have changed. So let's go over and take a look at our demo. 
So this is just a very, very simple uh, way of changing the layout of a uh, grid container. We basically have a body that is set to display grid and then a element that acts as our box that is going to be moved around. And we are randomly setting the start and center positions for the grid element. When we have a start view transition, we'll set that random alignment. And now we can animate between the all the different positions that this element can go into. Now, grid alignment is not something that should be something you could animate. But with view transitions, we can animate the unanimatable, if that's a word. We can animate things that you shouldn't animate. Uh, and this is all done in a performant manner that allows you to not uh, suffer any consequences of uh, web animation jank. Now, we could take this a step further by actually providing some hooks for view transitions. As we as our box is animating around, it's just kind of moving wherever the browser uh, expects it to be. So in this case, we want to track specifically this box. Now we can do that by providing a view transition name to that element. It's a unique name that's only ever going to be used for this node. And when we do that, we actually are able to track the element across the changes. So this is the same exact demo. Nothing has changed. The only thing that we've done here is added the view transition name to our box. And by providing that name, we can now maintain some sense of context of where this box was. And as we animate it around, we can see where it's going. We get a nice effect. All this is just done with mostly CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. Imagine trying to do this with web animations. This would be incredibly difficult to do as you now need to maintain where that element was and where that element is going and find the diff between uh, those two uh, layouts and those two positions. And a lot of times you're going to use something like position absolute, which becomes very difficult to manage. Now, that's great, but what if we want to animate something that, like I said, you shouldn't be able to animate, and that's display none. Now, this is actually a very, very cool demo that I cannot take credit for, but we're going to look at this because it's just so cool. And this is based on this app called, or this library called Isotope. Isotope was a early JavaScript library that allowed you to create these animated layouts and have these uh, kind of masonry type um, structures. So what we have here is a list of all of these different elements, and then we're providing a view transition and some custom CSS to define how those elements should behave. Well, let's just go ahead and say we want to see all of the elements that end with the uh, suffix ium, so em. So we want to see uh, uranium, thallium, sodium. Notice all the elements that were removed had their own dedicated animation. And watch, let's go ahead and actually make that even slower, so that way we can see it in its entirety. All the elements leaving have this really nice fade duration. We can have all the elements that are moving into their new position also animate nice and slowly. We get this really nice effect. And all we're doing is just filtering out the elements here in our JavaScript, setting up the CSS transitions using actual keyframe animations, providing CSS animation durations, timing functions, one's a little bit more advanced using the new linear function. But if we go back to our slides, we simply isolate it into this little bit of uh, CSS. So we have this hook where we can say, hey, view transition, I want you to select the old element with this name. We're going to select the box 0 
And if we think about our demo, this can be our box zero, this antimony, antimony? I think that's the element, whatever. We can select that and say, if there is no other element in our um, state, like if we're not animating something new in, if we're only having an old version, we're essentially removing it from the DOM. We're going to scale it out. And if we only have a new element or a new uh, view transition node, we're going to fade it in and scale it in and kind of get that nice uh, fade in and blow up effect. Um, very, very cool. Very, very powerful. Uh, it gives you this whole uh, hierarchy of different elements that you can grab. If we dove into each one of these, you get a before and after. We can see we have the old and the new. So we can start to have a powerful way of controlling the different states of our of our elements using this view transition pseudo uh, node DOM tree. Uh, that demo was built by the super cool Adam Argyle. Uh, I cannot comp, you know, I cannot give him enough praise for all the work that he's been doing to um, promote view transition. So. If you want another uh, talk to watch after mine, obviously, uh, check out Adam's uh, stuff. He, he, he knows what he's talking about. Now, that's only scratching the surface for view transitions. Basically, we can think of it as a way to use any CSS transition with DOM changes. This is about Angular. We're going to talk about how we can do Angular changes inside our Angular animations inside of our app. Angular has already had a well-planned and well-maintained uh, animation library for years now. It allows you to provide hooks into when things change inside of your app and then be able to animate the differences between those in a very smooth way. So how we can do this is actually going into our app and having a hook for adding new elements and deleting those elements from the app. So what does that actually look like? Well, let's go back to our demo over here. And we have our app. Uh, we can add items. You can see that we don't have our animations. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to our animation page. Now, let's do some window management. We just have this template over here. And this template has a list of different elements that we're iterating over, a list of to dos. The source for these to-dos doesn't need to be in memory. It could be anything from a database. It doesn't even need to be to-dos. We just have a list that we're iterating over. Now, to start off our animation, we need to create something called a trigger. A trigger is going to listen for changes that we can program. It could be a true fault, false value, or in our case, we're going to use a trigger, and we're going to call it list animation. And we're going to trigger this animation any time the length of our to-dos change. Now, from here, we're going to go ahead and, in our component decorator, create a animation uh, or animations array. We're going to give it the trigger. And we're going to trigger the list animations. Inside of that, we can create a transition between different points in our apps. So in this case, when the length of our to-do uh, to list increases when we increment it. Let's go ahead and create a new uh, query and query for the element that is going to be entering. So the newly created element, we're going to first put it off screen a little bit. And this is just going to offset it um, by negative 100 uh, in our Translate 3D. And we're going to put it beneath the uh, existing elements. Then we're going to animate it, and we're just going to set the style for that to be 000 for translate. So all of this will just animate quick, uh, pretty uh, seamlessly. Now, we can also create our transition for when the list decreases. And we're going to do uh, two things. One, we're going to grab the element that leaves, and we're going to fade it out um, to essentially uh, set the opacity to zero. But we're also going to do something else. We're going to get any sibling elements in here. So if we delete an element in the middle of a page, 
we want the other elements that are next to it, or at least direct siblings to it, to move up. To do that, we just simply add that animation, uh, give it a duration, and then we animate those up minus 100% uh, percent in our Translate 3D. All that together gives us this. See our elements fade in right as we expect them to. We can delete the last element and it simply fades away. Let's delete this element that is the second one. We fade away and then we move the existing things up. Angular animations can provide all of this out of the box and we only have to write a little bit of code to do so. Uh, it creates very performant web animations under the hood and, has, uh, and we have a nice standardized way of doing this that is following the Angular kind of best practices. That's cool, but this is supposed to be about web uh, view transitions. This is mostly about Angular animations. How can we just do this with uh, view transitions? Well, actually, it's not that difficult. See, we have our new view transition CSS that we want to apply here. So we can say to any animated item that we are removing, and it's the only element in there, let's just fade it out. And for anything new, we'll slide it down and fade it in. So let's go ahead and actually implement this inside of our uh, page. So this is the same exact setup as we had before. We have our list of to-dos. Let's go ahead and give each one of these items their own unique name. For now, this is a workaround for something that is a limitation of view transitions where you can only give things unique names. So we actually have to kind of hack around this to make it work. There's some, there's some things that we can do in the future that would probably make this easier. But for now, this is what we have to do. So we give it a view transition name. We give it a to-do item and then just append the ID to this. And then inside of our methods for adding and removing elements, we just wrap those in a document dot start view transition. Let's go ahead and we can save. We'll go back to our demo. Here we are in view transitions. Elements are being added to the DOM. We can see we get that nice transition. We can delete them and know that all of this stuff is actually uh, moving up as we remove them. And the element that is leaving is fading out nice and uh, perfectly. And as I kind of hinted to in my slides, this works quite fine. Out of the box, I didn't have to do much to get this to work, with the only caveat being that in my to-do service or in my way of actually triggering, I needed to tell um, I needed to tell Angular, trigger a change detection, manually do this. And to do that, I just use uh, application ref tick. There are other ways to do this. You could run it inside of Zone if you're using uh, a um, if you're still using Zones in your app. If you're using Zoneless, this is a pretty quick and effective way to do it. And so just wrap it inside of a, an effect. Anytime this to dos changes, we'll implement this app uh, this ref dot tick. It could there could be some performance hiccups here and there, but for the most part, uh, this just works. Now, all this together, there is a question about the router. Now, if you've heard of view transitions before, you might have heard it around uh, organizing route changes. And this is true. You can do this in Angular as well. Um, they have support for this inside of the Angular router where you can enable uh, view transitions by just providing a little feature into your Angular router setup. So if we go to our app config, we have our provide router over here. And we're going to use this with view transition uh, feature to wrap those uh, route changes inside of a start view transition. So let's save real quick. And you can see something is already starting to not add up. Let's reload again. We're reloading the page, and our elements are actually animating in. That's not kind of what I wanted. I can come to Angular page and it works because there are no view transitions here. 
but anytime I change to the view transitions page, I get this weird effect of having my things animate when I don't intend to it. And it's kind of the bottleneck when it comes to uh, view transitions. And if we zoom in in our dev tools, let's go ahead and just slow. Actually, we'll pause our animation real quick. Um, let's do this real quick. Uh, and we'll pause and go to view transitions. When we create our view transitions, we might only want to target this route, but we are unintentionally also going to target anything else that is uh, tagged with the view transition name. So view transitions are global. This is something that is just part of how uh, they work. We can kind of work around this with this scope transition feature. Um, it's something that is coming in the browser soon. Uh, if you've never heard of it, there's a nice little link to the explainer. But essentially, instead of us having this document start view transition, we can scope it to a similar uh, to a single element, and then any changes that happen inside of that that particular element will only trigger view transitions for that. Um, for that single element. So a nice way of scoping things down. This isn't in the browser yet. So um, we unfortunately are left with only having uh, global transitions. So where does this leave us? Because now we have two different ways to do animations. One requires a little bit of a custom syntax to animation, but is maintained by the Angular team. One is a built-in browser feature, but still has some features that are being worked out. I fully believe that view transitions will be a future of uh, how we do animations in the web. I do not see uh, the point of having dedicated framework-specific animation libraries. But for now, Angular animations are still going to be valuable because they act as a stopgap for where view transitions kind of fall flat. So we can think of the ways of how these uh, work or where view transitions are going to be global. They're going to be something that affects the whole entire DOM. We want it to affect any time those changes happen, and we want to animate those things. So we're going to use them sparingly, but over the entire um, entirety of our app. Angular animations, however, are going to be isolated to a particular portion of our app. We're going to scope them to a component and make them kind of one-off interactions that are going to happen repeatedly, but only in this one particular place. Uh, if we think of a shopping cart, if we add to shopping cart and we want to add a little animation for when an item goes in there, perfect the use case for uh, Angular animations. But we can actually blend the two of these together. Let's actually go back here, and we're going to check out a nice demo of all of these uh, animations interacting together in a very, very nice, perfect world. So here we're in Angular animations. And what we're going to notice is we're using Angular animations to animate the list elements. So all of this is being trigger uh, triggered by um, Angular's animations. But when we go to animate or go to change our different routes, we get a nice animation here in the title. And let's slow that down just to make sure we see it. We animate the title as it changes. We get our nice view transitions. And all of this can be done with Angular. So we're using the best features of both approaches and having them scoped to only do what we really need them to do. I only need animations for a global context with view transitions to affect the title. But I want animations to constantly affect this list, and I want it to be scoped only when the list changes. So we have a nice kind of balancing act of those two features playing well together. And just in case the demo didn't work, we have a nice little video. But there's a lot of features and a lot of cool things working here. Uh, view transitions are a super early but awesome uh, feature that are shipping in Chrome right now, 
and are also in Safari Tech Preview. So if you're a Mac user and you uh, are a diehard Safari fan like myself, uh, try out Safari Tech Preview. You can see all those features working uh, right now as they are constantly implementing on it. Still early on, but it's good signs. Um, you can check out the explainer for view transitions if you go to the uh, Wikag view transitions on GitHub. And for that, thank you so much. Hey, hey, thanks, Mike. Um... I'm always amazed by the quantity of things that uh, Ionic can do. And uh, yeah, that's very nice that you can mix those together. Uh, as you said, we also have indeed a lot of frameworks doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have it in Next, in Astro. Yeah, like everybody's doing the, and following the Storm layout. So that's, uh, that's very, uh, very good news. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's very nice to know that this is not something that they need to do anymore. Yeah. Um, regarding questions, we have a few. Uh, what does bro what browser support for view transition mean for the traditional SPA? Do you think it will heavily impact the decision between SPA and MPA? Yeah, this is a very popular question. Yeah. Um, so view transitions can work with both uh, single page apps and multi page apps. Um, there are single page apps that that current uh, standard is more or less figured out multi-page apps where you're doing them across different routes which are doing a hard refresh still needs to be it's still under investigation i think um there was some announcements at chrome at uh, google io about them uh but more or less it's a little bit more involved you have to provide certain meta tags it can only happen on resources of the same origin so you get some effects there um I don't think it'll heavily affect your decision if you choose to go SPA or MPA, but know that it's something that you can do in both. MPA is just going to be a little bit more work, in my opinion. Yeah, it's uh, more tricky and, uh, yeah. Um, I, I, sorry, I got confused because I love when people say SPA <laughs> and then I'm all lost. <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, that's... Um, that's indeed very nice because we, we used to ship a lot of CSS, even though the spec is not fully complete. It's like the model API where we have something without JavaScript. It's very nice, but uh, yeah, people are still trying to find uh, the middle ground between ease of use and um, yeah, like browser API. So, but um, yeah, that, that's very, very uh, encouraging for the future. Uh, next one is how can developers ensure that their view transitions are accessible to our users, including those with disabilities? That is an amazing question. Thank you so much <laughs> for asking that, whoever the person is. Uh, there is actually, if we go back to, uh, if we can get my screen back up again, let me go um, ahead and the backstage zoom. can probably bring it back. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. View transitions, because they are CSS driven, we can actually opt into using them by using some media queries. So for folks who have um, uh, motion yeah, sensitivity, yeah. yeah, we can say, if there's no preference, give people the animation. Uh, but if people have them, um, if people have those um, reduced motion queries enabled, we can either disable all animations or we can give a different kind of collection of animations. It could be a fade. It could be something a little bit gentler. Um, yeah. You can do those by just opting into them inside of your CSS. Yeah, and also since we have dark mode, we, we could even maybe have some uh, like uh, text size increase and everything thanks to CSS nowadays. So yeah, that's, um, that's very good. And what's about like maybe um, um, ARIA? labels or something like that? Is it like also easy to implement? It wouldn't necessarily be um, something that affects your uh, any ARIA or any like built-in accessibility okay. of uh, DOM nodes. So that still works without, uh, without view transitions kind of uh, getting involved. No, but like um, if you move from one page to the other, for example, mm -hmm. do you have like proper screen reading uh, a voice? It depends on how you uh, you built out that page. 
So if you're yeah, building yeah. out that page, view transitions are just like the nice little uh, dressing on top yeah. of everything. If the rest of the app is working well and is accessible, view transitions shouldn't get in the way. Um, are there any issues with cross-browser compatibility uh, with that when using view transitions? There shouldn't be. Um, the really, what's really nice is if you actually open this up in, say, a browser that does not support it. So let's go ahead and bring in Safari for now. Uh, cool. This is standard <laughs> Safari, and it doesn't support it. Yeah. We're doing some nice things in here to uh, work around it, saying if browser transitions or uh, view transitions view exist, transition. enable them. If not, we just opt out. Um, but we could also just say, get rid of the if statement and just opt for them. So we're still doing view transitions regardless. If we don't check for the feature, it'll still work. It'll just skip the transitions itself. Yeah, it's mostly a progressive enhancement without yes. using anything critical. Like yep. ha ha having C CSS not supported is less of an issue than JavaScript or something. So yeah, and if a CSS if it sees a rule and it just doesn't understand it, it'll just skip it. Yeah, uh, is it well supported in Firefox? I don't is know about Firefox. Maybe I don't know about Firefox. I, yeah. I don't particularly use Firefox as a browser, um, but I know that for the most part, Chrome, Safari, they're at least working on it and talking together. I'm assuming yeah. Firefox is involved in those conversations. Uh, yeah, I just checked the spec on. Yeah, Firefox is not supported either. Yeah, that's uh, that's a shame. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, in the end, I know that um, there is a lot of uh, new heads at Safari, so they'll probably fix it. And regarding Firefox, I don't know, but um, probably um, very soon. Uh, that's pretty much all for the questions. Do we maybe have like same uh, any interesting upcoming features for Ionic? Yeah. So one of the uh, cool thing that we're working on and something that I probably shouldn't share, but uh, it's gonna we be have this between us. Don't worry. Yeah. It's just just you and me. Uh, we have this really cool feature that we're working on for RTC over native to your uh, your web app. So for instance, if you want to stream uh, data like camera feed from the native layer into your web app, uh, we've we've added a feature that allows you to do that without really having to make you write native code, which is a really, really cool feature. It sounds pretty boring, but I promise you when you see it, it's super, super cool. Yeah, it's only boring if you don't use it, guys. Uh, exactly. Good. <laughs> for camera people, they're going to love this. Nice. Uh, yeah, and like that way we can probably have some more platforms uh, so that we have more flexibility regarding calls and everything. Exactly. Um, yeah. Thanks for this. Um, uh, it's very, it was very nice to meet you finally because I saw you you on Twitter and you're quite active there, but like seeing you as a speaker is always nice. Uh, thanks for that, Mike. Well. And, um, Take care. Wish you an amazing day. Bye-bye.